you know, one of the things that biggest mistakes that I find that real estate agents make is they sit down once a year and they do this big, long, in-depth business plan, which is great. But then what happens? We put it in the bottom of our desk and we don't look at it again until it's time to reevaluate next year. And so we're kind of in a unique proposition in the, in, you know, the real estate space that really real estate does not operate in 365 days a year. We operate in 90 day cycles. So we should be adjusting our business plan every single quarter, but then looking at it every single day. So with that said, if you've got this long drawn out business plan, that's 10 pages long, you're probably not going to take time to look at it every single day. But what I'm going to share with you toward the end of this is a one page business plan that's intentionally designed to sit on your desk and something that can easily be managed and looked at every single day. So just a little bit about myself, for those of you that don't know me, again, my name is Mike I'm Ruwad. I've been a licensed real estate agent for 13 years. I've been in real estate a lot longer than that, though, as a second generation real estate investor. Uh, I am with EXP Realty. I joined them eight years ago as agent number 333. And of course, now we're 88,000 agents. So it's been an exciting ride and I've done various roles and leadership roles within the company. Um, I'm also a real estate investor and, and I've got courses and other things of how we've turned we turned our initial investment into $25,000 into a multi-million dollar portfolio. So again, Every team technique, everything that I'm going to share with you today is how we have consistently earned over seven figures every single year. And of course, for those of you that are have a family, um, I am married and mother of two wonderful boys. So of course, this is all in conjunction with, you know, raising kids and, you know, trying to be the best mom and wife that I can as well as an entrepreneur. So with that said, I'm just going to play a little bit of this video because I've, I'm a firm believer that the secret sauce of anything that we do really starts with our own mindset. So I'm not going to play the whole thing, but we're going to play just a little bit of this video um, just to go ahead and get us in the right mindset. Mental toughness or what I call extra vision is a lot different than motivation. So if I said right now, everybody in here, we're all going to run a half marathon in five days. And we all go, yeah, we're getting fired up. I said, yeah, we're going to start tomorrow at 5 a.m. We leave. 5 a.m. comes. It's dark. It's cold. Our bed is comfortable. It's hard to get motivated at 5 in the morning. And maybe you do it one day. But again and again and again, that is the x-ray vision. It's that mental toughness that says, you know what? I don't care that it's dark and wet. Windy, cold, I'm going to go anywhere. You have to train your brain by doing things that make you uncomfortable consistently to build this mindset that when things get hard, which they will be, we don't shy away, we don't quit, we attack. I'm seeing through all those walls. I'm getting to where I want to go. The only way to increase your mental toughness, it's like a muscle, is to do things that make you uncomfortable. When you do things that stink, Every day, they might be making extra calls. They might be staying late at work. Whatever it is, little things. You take your baseline from a five, and you can make it a six. And once it goes up, it never goes back down. You never go back down. It's all about taking your baseline that you operate on and raising it and challenging yourself and pushing yourself. How you do anything is how you do everything. It's no so like I said, I'm not going to play the entire video, but wow. I mean, isn't that powerful? How you do anything is how you do everything. And especially as an entrepreneur, it's important that we're ne moving the needle forward every single day. I think a lot of times it's easy to compare with other real estate agents, other professionals, and want to be where they are in their business. But what you haven't looked at is really the compound effect of how you've gotten there and how they have gotten there year over year. And so, as I mentioned, it really starts with your mindset. I think a lot of times we focus on the strategy when in reality, you know, strategy is only 20% of it. And this is, you know, something I learned a long time ago from Tony Robbins is strategy is only 20%. 80% of it is your mindset and your psychology. So just like the video that I just shared with you, I only shared a couple of minutes 
but it's all about starting in the right mindset first. And so I intentionally watched some kind of motivational video just like that every single morning. That's how I start my morning because I want to make sure that I, you know, I'm starting the morning off right. So the first step before we dive into the business plan of it, you've got to ask yourself, are you in the right mental space? Are you a downer, a dreamer, or a doer, right? So the downers, those are the people that are always negative. Those are the people that are subtracting. You know, if you look at math, they're subtracting from your life. Um, uh, oh, I think we've got a couple of people. If you can mute, please, um, that'd be great. But so if you've ever been around somebody that if they're always negative, there's just something that, you know, every time they tend to see the negative in every situation, um, if not, you might want to look in the mirror because they're all, and I'm just kidding, but you know, I would say most of us fall into the dreamer category. We have good intentions and we're not necessarily negative, but we rarely fall through. And so we talk the big talk, but we don't actually put in the work as you saw in the video that's necessary consistently to move the needle forward in your business every single day. And then of course we love, we have the doers. I love the doers. Those are the people that take control and they create their own paycheck, especially right now with this market shift. Guys, I'm here to tell you that it, depending on how you look at it, you know, things are not going to get easier. We've been in, on an all time high in the market. Of course, things started to shift this year. There's a lot of uncertainty going into 2023, but just like anything, it's all in how you look at it. You can look at it as, you know, I'm going to give up, I'm going to get out of the industry, which unfortunately there's going to be a large percentage of real estate agents that do. I hope that you're not one of those statistics. That's why we're doubling down on our training and our value add to help agents not be one of those statistics that get out of the business. But then you have people that really are the doers that create their own paychecks that like, I don't care what the market is doing. I don't care what the world is doing and all these outside circumstances. I'm going to control me. I'm going to control my prospecting activities and my business. And honestly, in a market shift, that's where a lot of people excel, myself included. I got licensed in October of 2009 in the last downturn recession, which I think is probably a lot worse than what we're expecting this one to be. But what have you is that's with some of the best years that we ever had. So it's all on how you look at it. You either look at it as you know, a challenge, or this is going to be an opportunity. And you first have to start with really a roadmap to success. So if I were to ask everyone here, if you were going to drive across country, let's say from Florida to California, would you do it without a map? And most of you would probably say, no, I'm going to have some kind of GPS, some kind of map, some kind of guide, right? And the reality is, so if you wouldn't drive across country without a map, why are we running our businesses without some kind of map? Because I'll, I would argue that most real estate agents don't have any kind of guide other than I want to sell 30 homes and sell $10 million um, in volume this year, but we have no kind of guide of how we're going to get there. The reason why a map is so incredibly important is because not only do we have some kind of guide, but this is also going to allow you to plan and allow for detours. So just as you, you are going to drive across country, you know, accidents are going to happen. There's going to be some kind of detour, but if you have a guide, then it's going to be easy to get you back on track and not derailed. So, you know, having a map, really visualizing it because of course we become what we think about. I'll run through some of these pretty quickly because we have a lot of content to cover in the next half hour. But of course, there's some necessary tools that you have to have. I hope everybody here has some kind of smartphone uh, but more importantly, a website in <clears throat> a website that's mobile friendly. I can't tell you how many real estate agents I look, try to find their website, or I try to look on their Facebook. And it's almost like they're trying to be a secret agent. It's like they're hard to, to find how to get a hold of. And that's not what we should be doing in this business. So have a website, make sure it's mobile friendly, do an audit on all of your social media and make sure that you're easily findable and easily to get a hold of. And more importantly, um, you know, of course, answer the phone, right? Now, take it a step further. Your website should have an MLS search feature. That way, you know, we're not steering clients at looking at other third-party websites that you have a live MLS feed to your website, which is called the IDX, the Internet Data Exchange. And ideally, your website is tied into some kind of database, some kind of CRM. You know, we all, there's a, a phrase that I love that what gets measured 
gets managed. And so you can't measure where your leads are coming from, what kind of sources of business and all of your different prospecting activities if you don't have a CRM. So I get questions all the time, what is the best CRM? It's the one that you use, right? So we've got to have something to track because what gets measured gets managed. If you do have questions about a good CRM and website, go ahead and shoot me a message. I'll have my information toward the end of this and I'd be happy to share with you what we use. And then of course, a goal setting worksheet that I'm gonna share with everybody today and an exponential tracker, both personal and business. The reason why I say this is I work with a lot of top producers all over the country and it's amazing to me at how many of them are not tracking their expenses. They have a lot of money coming in, but they're not tracking all their expenses of what's going out. And at the end of the year, once they, after they pay their taxes and everything, there's very little that they're netting for them and their family. So it's very important that we really double down and do a self and a business audit right now. And then of course, your CRM, if you have some kind of drip campaign already set up where your, your system will text and email on your behalf, of course, that's a big plus. So, so just some key definitions that I'll cover real quick is, you know, P&L, that's a profit and loss statement. Again, that's how we're going to track what we're bringing in and what's going out. GCI is gross commission income. That's the total of commission paid to you by representing a client. Cost of sale. These are monies that you pay out to transact the sale. So example, that would be referral fees, brokerage split, caps, if you're on a team or if you're getting relocation. And I say this because I have you know a lot of agents that I talk to that are getting a lot of leads from a relocation department, but once they pay the relo company and they pay their brokerage and they pay all their, their dues, then there's not a lot that they're bringing home. So you really have to look at that financial investment and that time investment. Operating expenses. These are costs associated with operating your business. So this is different than your cost of sale. These are going to be your monthly dues, your license fees, your office fees, marketing, advertising, supplies, gas, etc. And then net income. This is really what we want to be paying attention to. That's going to be cost of sales and operating expenses is going to be your net income. And then closing ratio. This is a number of actual transactions divided by the number of possible transactions. And I'll get into that just here in a little bit. Your personal income is the amount you took home to your household. After tax income, it's of course that personal income deducted by your income tax. And then closed volume is the value of all the homes sold within the year. Now, I think a lot of real estate companies and a lot of real estate agents have gotten so kind of accustomed to promoting how many millions of dollars in real estate that they've sold, I've actually been able to show real estate agents how to sell less, kind of, you know, take some of the fat out in their, in their business, if you will, and be able to bring more to them and their family, which ultimately is what matters. So I think we focus too much on the bigger number and less on what we're actually bringing home to our family. So where do you start? You're in the right place, right? We're going to create our business plan, create a lead generation plan, both online and offline. Then once you've done all of that, you have to start creating leverage. And that's where you're going to create a hiring plan. What leverage will I need? And what is your personal hourly worth? It's really important to know your personal hourly worth. So then you now know what tasks you can start delegating once it's time to start hiring out. And of course, what is your budget? Typically, it's no more than 10% of your GCI, your gross commission income. So your production plan, we've got to start first at really identifying where our sources of business have come from. And one of the best places that you can do that is looking at your past sales. So for example, if I've got, you know, um, networking and, and marketing is only 5% of my sales, but 50% of my sales or referrals and from past clients, and it might make more sense for me to really double down on my referrals and stay in touch with past clients and less spending time at network and marketing events um, because that's only 5% of my business. So again, you know, there's a lot of easy ways to stay busy in, in the real estate space, but ultimately we wanna be focusing on our IPAs, our income producing activities. And the only way we know what our IPAs are are by tracking our business. If you're newer into real estate, you don't have any past sales, then just go talk with some other pro top producers in your market, in your office, 
and start learning what's working for other people. I always recommend, and you'll see this on the business plan, of having no more than four lead generation buckets. That's no more than four things that you should be focusing on online and offline. And if, you, if you're newer in your real estate and you don't have four, then you could definitely introduce a new lead generation bucket. But I would introduce one per quarter, and that way you're not just overwhelming yourself because what happens is we start the new year and we have all these bright ideas and all these changes we want to make, but we're not implementing them slowly. And so then we get overwhelmed and we just stop. So I would recommend introducing a new lead generation bucket once a quarter. So some examples of that would be, you know, if you're doing open houses or if you're doing Facebook advertisings or, you know, like I said, network marketing events, what have you make sure that you're focusing on just four and then everything that you do is intergrained with those four lead generation buckets. Of course, it's important to track your closing ratio. How many appointments have you had versus closed sales? And this is reason this is important is sometimes we can just perfect our scripts a little bit, increase, increase our closing ratio. So instead of going on hundred appointments a year, maybe we go on 50 to close 30. What is your average sales price? Of course, this is going to vary. We've got agents on this call today from all over the country. So this is going to vary market to market, but also agent to agent. So what is your bread and butter? The reason why I mentioned that is I've worked with a lot of agents that work with a higher price point, a luxury price point in their market, but then there's times that those homes are not necessarily selling. And so they've had to really identify that and then bring back their average price point a little bit to the homes that are really the bread and butter of the business that are selling quickly because you could have million dollar plus listings, but if they're not selling, then of course you're not having any closed transactions. So an example is if you have $2 million in gross volume divided by 10 transactions, then your average sales price would be $200,000. And then what's your average commission? Are you a full service agent? Are you giving a discount? Are you doing, you know, have you been in the industry 20 years and you're actually charging a higher commission than maybe what some of your competitors are? I'm not here to tell you what commission you should be charging, but the reality is you have to identify that because again, I could show it, see an agent that's selling a hundred homes a year, but if they're discounting their services and they're doing a lot of entry only listings, then those numbers can really be deceiving to what they're bringing home. So a net income goal, let's just give you a production goal example. Let's say you wanna bring home $200,000 next year. This is what you're gonna bring home to you and your family. So your operating expenses are $25,000. Uh, again, that's all your dues and marketing and things like that. Cost of sales, it's $20,000. This is different for every brokerage. So that might be team splits, that might be brokerage splits, et cetera, relocation. Miscellaneous is $5,000. So really in order to bring $200,000 home, you need to bring in gross $250,000. So how do I figure out what activities I should be doing in order to bring in $250,000. So if I know that my average sales price is $200,000 and you multiply that, let's just say as an example, 3% commission, then on average, I'm going to make $6,000 in commission. So now if I divide the 250 by the six, I know that I need 41.6 transactions next year to hit $250,000. So now I look at, start looking at my closing ratio. How many appointments do I need to go on in order to close 42 transactions? So if I look at my closing ratio and just for the sake of example, my closing ratio is two to one. So I know I need to go on 84 appointments in order to close 42 transactions. Well, there's 40, 52 weeks in a year. Let's take out a couple of weeks for vacation. So we'll divide that by 50. Now I've really reverse engineered my numbers where I know that I need to go on 1.68 appointments every single week in order to hit that $250,000 gross. So now I take that number. How many calls do I need to get to have two appointments per week? Um, Karen, if you don't mind, I think we might need to, to mute your mic. Um, Thank you. So how many calls do I need to get on to make to set two appointments per week? And that's where you start creating your, your daily goals. So if you notice, I took this big, large number of $250,000 gross, then I reverse engineered it of what my personal statistics are. And I divided it into what activities I should be doing every single month, every single week, every single day. And now it becomes little bite-sized pieces that create that compound effect that I know if I go on two appointments every single week, 
I'm going to hit my goals, right? So I created this formula a long time ago that life is a business and life stands for learn, implement, focus, follow up and execute. And most of the time when I ask agents, where do we get stuck? Nine times out of 10, they would say in the execution phase. But I would argue in the real estate space, that's actually the easy part, right? Going to closing for the most part, unless you have an unforeseen circumstance, getting, you know, getting all the paperwork signed, getting your check is not the hard part. And when we look at learning, that's not difficult either. It was not hard to come to the Zoom today and to learn a little bit. So where we get stuck is in the middle, in the if. It's the implementation and the focus and the follow-up. And so the agents that I know that are really, truly going to crush Going into 2023, number one, they're going to commit. And number two, they're going to stay consistent. You've already heard me say this over and over again. You have to look at moving the needle forward in your business every single day. Um, we've got somebody else here that might need to mute. Um, so moving that 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 needle in your business every single day. So think, ask yourself, where do you get stuck? And uh, ultimately, you know, I know for us, year over year, We've always looked at every single day trying to accomplish something. Some days, honestly, are bigger than others. But if you push that needle forward every single day, that's where you're going to make huge strides in your business over time. And so some of the sources of business, some examples of traditional lead cultivating might be your sphere of influence for sale by owners, door knocking, expireds, mailers, affiliates, et cetera. Of course, in the digital age, we've got Facebook ads, Craigslist, LinkedIn, Google AdWords, Zillow, Realtor.com. And then strategic partnerships, that's quality versus quantity. I'm going to show you how to take your sphere of influence, which is taught by, you know, many real estate companies, those are friends, families, those are close to you. But now you really start looking at quality versus quantity. And you have what I like to call as your sphere of power, which are your top 10 cheerleaders in your business. These are the people when they hear real estate, they think of you first and they're going to um, give somebody your name. Because the reality is sometimes friends and family and your SOI are not always your personal cheerleaders, unfortunately. Um, there's a book also, if you just Google it, it's uh, one of my good friends, Gene Fredericks. He's got 101 ways to lead generate. It really goes to show you that there are no lack of ways to lead generate. There are deals everywhere around us. I mean, guys, we are not here selling life insurance. We are selling homes, we are selling shelter, which is one of the three basic necessities. And so if you have enough conversations, you're going to get business. And so when I really take a step back and I'm doing a self audit of where did my business come from? And that way I know where my business came from last year. I know where it came from the year before. And now I know where to double down. Can you hear what they're saying, saying? I'm, I'm sorry, Carrie, would you mind uh, muting your mic if you don't mind? Thank you. Um, so if I look at just this example, a uh, sphere of influence, 10%, you know, sphere of power, 20%, referrals, 10, prospecting, 30, seminars, workshops, five, and paid internet leads, 25%, then I can really look at those numbers and understand that maybe seminars and workshops were not the best use of my time. And I start putting more time and energy into maybe prospecting for new leads. So you have to ask yourself, where is your time best spent? And I think especially over the last couple of years, as real estate agents with the market that we've had, we've been focusing a lot on marketing and marketing is like throwing something at the wall and hoping that it sticks. It's like hoping a buyer or seller is going to call you really for those that are going to truly be successful in 2023 are the agents that understand that prospecting and going back to the basics are where we control the outcome. So outbound prospecting, really going back to the basics, open houses, cold calling, expired, things like that, those are the ones that are going to succeed instead of just sitting there, you know, have their phone in their hand and hope that somebody calls them. So in order to set yourself up from the path, we want to determine our ideal client. That's where we don't compete. We dominate in our market. So first you do that by asking, what is your personal niche? Every single person on this call has a different niche, has a different ideal client. And that's how you identify that. And then you're no longer in competition with everybody else. So you know your niche, you know where your business currently comes from. And then you ask yourself, what problem do I solve for them? Once you have identified those three things, which I would encourage you to work on that today, 
then you can start targeting all your messaging, all of your marketing, and you're not running with the rest of the pack. You're the big shark in the deep blue ocean, right? Instead of swimming with the, the rest of the fish. And you now become the known expert. Tracking your leads, as I mentioned, the very beginning of this, what gets measured gets managed. Leads are as good as the one converting them. You could bring in 100 leads, but if you have a horrible conversion rate, then you're going to need to bring in more leads. So you, it's also to have realistic expectations. We know the national average on just a basic lead is a 3% conversion rate. So I need to bring in 100 leads in order to have three closed deals from those lead sources. How are you going to track your leads? What methods are you going to follow up? Like I mentioned, have some kind of drip campaign because the average of conversion is eight touches. But what's remarkable is most real estate agents stop after two. And so if you can do above and beyond what the rest of the world is doing, again, that's where you're going to separate yourself. If they have a phone number, call immediately. Every second, every minute that you wait and you don't call that potential client, that's going to decrease your conversion rate. So you definitely want to call immediately if you can. If they don't answer, leave a voicemail. But more importantly, again, take it a step further, leave a video text message introducing yourself. And it might be something like this. I just pick up my phone and say, hey, uh, this is Mike and Ruwad. I just left with EXP Realty. I just left you a message. Uh, I wanted to see what time might be good for us to connect. But more importantly, I wanted you to be able to put a face with a name. So I just wanted to send you a short video introducing myself. If you do that, even if it's off the cuff, it's custom, you say their name at the beginning of it, I promise you, you're going to stand out from the other 10 agents that are going to be calling them. Of course, keep your scripts simple and sweet, short and sweet. So real estate is a competitive market. How are you going to stand out? Let your personality shine through all of your marketing because the reality is we are in the marketing business. The best marketer wins. Look at what everyone else is doing and then do the opposite. So again, I mentioned, identify 10 sphere of power. These are your own personal cheerleaders. They want to see you win. You could do farming, which is sending mailers to your neighborhood at least 12 times a year. But I will warn you, that is not a quick turnaround. You're not going to send out postcards and really expect to have a turnaround from that. But if you do that over time, it's a way to create a very sustainable business. Social Powerball is build an audience of two or three social media platforms. Don't need to be an expert of them all. I know for me, I focus on Facebook, LinkedIn, and Instagram, but mainly Facebook because I know that's where a lot of my businesses come from. Phone calls. I mentioned keep your scripts short and sweet. Sweet. You can use CATS, which stands for compliment, attract, takeaway, and schedule. Never make a cold call again. You should never leave an appointment without scheduling the next conversation, the next appointment. What is that next step going to be? And of course, some examples are builders, investors, attorneys, probates, locksmith. Like I said, if you look up the 101 ways to lead generate, you'll find out there is no lack of leads. There's no lack of ways to lead generate. You also want to look at your return on investment and time. What is your average cost per lead? How many leads are you closing? How many appointments are you closing? So an example, if you're spending $1,000 a month on lead spend, ad spend, and that's giving you 100 leads per month, then your average cost is $10 per lead. Well, if I have a 3% conversion rate, that's going to give me three closed sales per month at a $6,000 average commission, three closings, that's 18,000 GCI that that's bringing in. So now that I know my conversion, that I'm going to bring in $18,000 return on a $1,000 lead spend investment. What's your hiring plan? We all have the same 24 hours a day, seven days a week. The reason some of us can do more than others is because we've learned how to leverage. And you have to start by knowing your hourly worth. So if you're bringing in $18,000 commission on a monthly basis, let's say 40 hour work week, 160 hours a month, that's on average $112 per working hour. So if you know that, now you know that you should be delegating $10 an hour activities. These activities can include showing assistance, data entry, contract entry, marketing, appointment setting, et cetera. In order to hire, you have to have some kind of team manual, some kind of checklist, start documenting the tasks that you're eventually gonna wanna delegate out. And of course, we've all heard about time blocking. Consistency matters. Create a time block schedule or task list for the day. Get the most boring task completed first because what happens if you don't, they're gonna drag you through the rest of the day. 
if you hate prospecting, if you hate cold calling, I would get all your cold calling done from 8 a.m. to 10 a.m. And that way you feel like you have conquered the rest of the day. Vice versa, if you don't, you start doing all these other activities, you're mentally going to be dragged down throughout the day. So a suggested read that I have for prospecting is Fanatical Prospecting. It's a great book. Block out time to think and reflect. I don't think we do this enough because the worst enemy of success is not continuing to grow. Consistency matters. Not doing an activity today can put you months behind and what you're benefiting from today is the work that you did from 90 days ago. I mentioned at the very beginning of this that real estate operates in 90 day cycles. So if you don't have any business today, I would be looking at the activities that you did 90 days ago and vice versa. If you don't have business 90 days from now, that's because of the activities you are or are not doing right now. So what expenses to expect? Of course, you have your income from buyers, sellers, referrals, et cetera. You have your cost of sale that we talked about and traditional expenses. Like I said, I went through a lot of this very quickly in half an hour. I am throwing my information up here though. If you have any specific questions, please don't hesitate to reach out to me. I also want to stop this screen share and show you the actual business plan that I will email um, everybody, put your email in the chat and I will send out this bulletproof business plan. As I mentioned, this is something we designed years ago. It's intentional to be a, just a one page business plan. It goes over everything that we talked about today. You should have short-term, mid-term and long-term goals. You should know your why and have some emotional attachment because your why, as Tony Robbins would say, your why has to make you cry. You have to know why you're doing what you're doing every single day. As you saw in the video, when you don't want to wake up at 5 a.m. and go out because your bed is a lot warmer and it's cold outside, you've got to know what that mental break is to get you to do what you don't want to do. We have to be self-reflective. Are we being a downer, a dreamer, a doer? And this can change from day to day. So there's days that I'm definitely not a doer and I might be a little bit more of a dreamer or a downer, but I have to identify that and make the necessary changes. Plan of action, as I mentioned, your ideal client, what do you want to make as far as gross commission incomes in your number of transactions? And then we reverse engineer your numbers so you know what activities you should be doing every single day. And then last but not least, we've got your four lead generation buckets that we talked about. What are the prospecting activities? How are you going to bring this back to the basics? And what prospecting lead generation activities are you going to be doing every single day consistently, non-interrupted, non-negotiable to make sure you hit and crush your goals in 2023.